All right, my friends, welcome to episode 384 of Prof and Dev Play Games. My name is Larry, the professor, and over there is Anthony, the dev. Uh, we are talking this week about Redfall. The fallout from, from Redfall? <laughs> yeah, fallout. Redfall. Red fallout. fallout. Uh, damn, we should have talked off mic because that was a great one. <laughs> Redfall. Fall. Redfall. Yeah, I saw uh, Redfall. A lot. Redfall Fall or something like that. Yeah. Uh, and then we're going to talk about our Tears of the Kingdom hype, because this is the last uh, podcast we will ever put out before Tears of the Kingdom is released. <laughs> we are on this side of that. And I, I can't remember a game that I've been more hyped for. Like, I, I'm i so excited. It's unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. It, <laughs> I had a coworker this past week, and it's like, oh, I'm not going to be available next Friday. I, I'm like, uh course me just being like oh what doing anything good for the weekend it's like i'm going to hyrule <laughs> i'm going to hyrule perfect i'm like god damn it you're right that comes out next week yeah, um exactly. i'm like you why get... didn't i take it off this is dumb <laughs> digitally it comes out thursday at 9 p.m apparently yeah um, which uh, i have a physical copy so i do as well um which will come from amazon whenever it comes hopefully you know it says it says right now it's still may 12th so yeah, and they're usually good about that. Uh, except you have to deal with the stupid delivery driver stuff where you're at. Um, oh, sometimes. Yeah. Fuck yeah, dude! Like, like we I left don't. your package for you. Uh, that's not my patio. That's my neighbor's patio. And then they, my neighbors usually just take my shit. <laughs> I have to like yeah. go to their door and be like, "You took my thing." Oh, I thought it was ours. Oh, really? You think that fucking Nintendo Did you Switch look game at was the, yours? Look uh. at the name on it. It does have a name on it. <laughs> like, <laughs> exactly. Oh my god! Like one time, she was just. Uh, I, my groceries got delivered to her house, you know, mid pandemic. And I didn't realize it until, you know, probably an, half an hour after I got delivered. And I go to knock on their gate and she's just loading all my food into her fridge. And I was like, that's my food. Oh, I thought it was mine. The, my name is literally on all those bags. So she like did, un- gets it from the fucking fridge. Did, did you order it? Any food? <laughs> that is exactly <laughs> my thought. I was like, did, did you order groceries? <laughs> <laughs> Did you order those kind of groceries? At hat at exactly the same time I did. Like, do you eat the food that you're loading into your fridge? <laughs> it was so weird. Oh, so Come weird. Come on, people. Oh. Um, and then for the listeners, next week, uh, we're going to have a guest friend, Tom, who writes for Zelda Universe. I think it's .net. Um, is coming on. He's a big Zelda fan. Oh, boy. Um, he will be... Um, what's the word? It's like a tourniquet. That's probably not the right word, but I'm trying to think of a metaphor where if I give my copy of Tears of the Kingdom to somebody else and I don't have it next week or the week after or whatever, um, or he's coming on 21st. I'm sorry. I got my fucking dates wrong. Okay. Two weeks he's coming on because if I give away my copy of Tears of the Kingdom, you need someone to talk to about that game with. Um, so in two weeks, we'll have a Zelda fan on this podcast talking about Tears of the Kingdom. Um, I'll be here too, by the way, because I don't really care about those. Um, so that's that. All right. Uh, I played Redfall. <laughs> okay. I, I downloaded all seventy-seven gigs of Redfall to check it out after uh, it released. Is that um, the worst thing ever? No, it wasn't. That's it, what I heard. I watched a bunch of streamers play it. It was mediocre. That's exactly it. It's bland and boring, and like the combat is just like dumb like i just blow in their general direction and the enemies fall like i i faced a boss at the bottom of the um firehouse and it was just like done like nothing no engaging mechanics no nothing just a fucking blue kind of orb in the middle (laughs) had a vampire face on it um it was just bland yeah nothing to write home about but it wasn't like game breaking it wasn't buggy like you know the enemy ai was kind of dumb um, but it wasn't, you know, worst game of the year. But you know, with Metacritic's at sixty-one. This is a game that I counterpicked because you you drafted it. Uh, yep. I feel so good about that. <laughs> On the strength that it was Arcane. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Like really. this is out of line for Arcane and even Arcane Austin. So yeah. it's a really weird miss. And um. Phil Spencer was on the out on the X cast, which we'll talk about. But you know, there's a bunch of you know, consternation about Xbox right now. Woof. Yeah. So what are your thoughts? Um, yeah, like you said, I was people streaming it and it was fine. Like again, I didn't see anything majorly game breaking while they were playing. There were some small bugs here and there, but 
it just kind of looked a little dated. AI wasn't the best. Um, it kind of wanted to be a Destiny-like experience, but it's not really. Like, again, another game comes out that tries to copy that formula, and it doesn't... It misses. Yeah. Um, nothing has really figured out how to do the, the Destiny thing, besides Destiny. And even Bungie didn't figure out how to do it for a long time. And I still feel like a lot of their player base would say they don't know how to do it. Um, yeah, I, I, I agree, exactly. But they went to Diablo um, devs and were like, okay, how did you recover? And they learned some from that. It took them forever, really. Yeah. Um, Redfall just seems like a... I said in our Discord, I feel like it's what came out because of sunk cost fallacy more than anything. Yeah. Like, But although, we should talk about the X-Cast, because Phil Spencer did have some interesting things to say of like their internal reviews, like... Not should not be shocking. Any major publisher gets outside sources to give basically um, their mock fake, reviews, f- yeah. mock reviews, fake reviews, yeah. and they mm-hmm. were coming in a little higher, not sixty. They were coming in in the seventies and like low eighties in their mock reviews, which I'm like, that's crazy. Um, get better mock reviewers, I guess, or the mo- their mock reviewers exactly. aren't aligning well. Any like. With, yeah, the critics anymore, yeah. Critics anymore. Um, realignment needs to happen. But So I can see why they're like, oh, it's not going to be amazing, but it's fine to, to release, and we need a spring game for Game yep. Pass and the mm-hmm. whole thing. Yep. Um, so internally, I'm like, that's just a red flag of, hey, your ability to evaluate games internally is broke. Yeah. Um, and I'm not going to put this on, like, Phil Spencer completely, because you have to think, there's Phil Spencer at the top of Xbox games. How many layers of management before they even ta- have a person under them that talks to uh, Arcane Austin? Yeah, how far below um, Spencer is Harvey Smith, you know? like A lot. I would have to five or six levels. Yeah, right. So um, he, I, I like the philosophy. Spencer he... is not going to be really that involved in seeing any of this uh, yeah. that often. I mean, that, as the head of Xbox Game Studios, he's going to be honestly dealing with his Activision merger most of the time, yep, to be honest. Exactly. Like, that's that's probably what he's dealing with. Well, I feel like you don't want that position to be so micromanaging that they're, like, down to, like, you know, different milestones and really, like, digging yeah. into the details. You tr- you should be trusting your team below you. Yep. And this is something that they liked, I guess. You know, maybe they didn't want to hit this time target. Maybe they would have liked to push it up, but the timeline was such that, like, you know, that's set higher up. Like, this is the timeline you're going to hit, but Otherwise, I don't. I th- I thought that interview was good because Phil Spencer was candid. He looked defeated from a lot of shit that's been going on recently, um, and he was just like, "This is on me." He wasn't blaming anyone when really nope. it's not entirely really his fault. But I mean, he's, the he's just head. the yeah, he's the head. Yep. So even if there's all these layers between him, he helped put those players in place. Uh, yep, and exactly. if they're failing, and it's not producing good products, that's still on him. Well, and at, I, yes. at, at the top, like. And, I think the other piece that's on him is, and you know, the focus on Activision Blizzard, the focus on trying to like get more, as opposed to we have a lot, let's make them make quality things first. Like we yeah. did a huge acquisition rush, now let's make sure everything they put out is quality, and then do another round of acquisitions. Yeah. But like they acquired, and what have we seen? Yeah, not a whole lot, unfortunately. Oh. Not yeah. like they've, and that's the whole thing is I feel like they need to show things. Um, unfortunately, where I feel like Redfall probably pretty early on could have been looked at and been like, this is not working. Yeah. Like, it's just not coming together. Yep. I know we put some money into this and some time into it, but let's just scrap it. Take this team. They can work on something else. Like, I'm sure they have more than this as an idea of what they can work on. Right. Um, but I do feel like there is the sunk cost fallacy going on of like, well, we've already put so much time into it, so much money. We got to at least get it out. Um, It's going to do okay, um, but we have to have a game out. Um, I I feel like that mentality is probably damaging Game Pass at this point, where Game Pass is like the subscription service that you get six out of ten first party games on. (laughs) Like, you know, I feel like the indie games and, the uh, you know, are bangers, but... yep. Yeesh. Yeah, know. I mean, like, but you don't get it for first party, that's for sure. Yeah. Like, what don't. first, and even if it is, it's like, the last f- few have been, uh, honestly, this entire year have been mediocre from, from first party. 
um, fine to to. Bad. I mean, my, um, Minecraft Legends was seventy four or so on Metacritic yeah, or this, Open Critic. Redfall has um, not uh, been great, yeah. and then I mean, I kind of consider Halo Infinite as well in there. Oh, absolutely, because like, yeah. the end of last year and like yep. their whole goal, and like nothing has landed that well from first party. Um, I guess when was uh, Forza was a little bit ago. Well, Forza uh, Five won that Game of the Year um, from IGN at least. Um, yeah, and that so was that, last year. Yeah. So well, I thought Halo Infinite was the beginning of twenty two, the campaign. I thought the multiplayer was the end of twenty one. Am I? Do I have those dates? Was on? it? It was. Holy crap! No. Yeah. Yes. You're right. The mo- yeah. Okay. Good. The, the the main thing with uh, oh my Infinite. god, time means nothing anymore. Yes, exactly. I don't even know. I'm like, what the <laughs> what happened to twenty twenty two? Oh no. <laughs> Where's what? Oh no. They, I mean, they really had nothing. You know, they had Infinite, and that was really about it. Um, except for the two shining pearls really are pentiment and hi-fi rush you know and that's I true feel like, i feel like those are good game pass games where like people may not pick them up and maybe hi-fi rush but uh pentiment for sure is like fucking niche um uh-huh. but that's a great great get for game pass and if you could do more of those kind of quality games like more often i think you're you've got a good service but when you've just fucking self-inflicted wounds with something like Redfall where they're getting momentum with like you know Pentiment was at least critically well received and then Hi-Fi Rush was critically and player well received yep. you're moving your trajectory is moving up and now it's just like I can't imagine the pressure that um, Bethesda is under for Starfield at this point yeah pretty much that that <laughs> is terrifying and yeah. I'll be honest uh, well they have their thing in a month from now June June 11th they are right. mm-hmm. showing off, uh, doing big Starfield presentation and Xbox Game Studio presentation, um, and they need to show a lot on Starfield. Like there are parts of Starfield that look cool, but I think there's still a lot of skepti- skepticism if this can actually be a fun game. Like, yeah, right. It looks cool, like a lot of options, but you could have all sorts of options and then have it be really boring still. Um, so I feel like I really need Bethesda to show off like, well, what you've been working on this one since Fallout Fallout 76 was their was not their their main office. This is the team that did Fallout 4. I see. Okay. That is doing Starfield. That's like the main one in Bethesda, Maryland. Like Yeah. <laughs> um this is I think this is guns. I think this is the Fallout 4 team. Well, if it right? wasn't, if it's if it's not seventy six, then yeah, because that was the last. It's thing not seventy six. Yeah, Fallout Four so, was the last thing before seventy six. It was, and yeah, that's it's the Fallout Four that team mm-hmm. who were doing the mainline Fallout's and uh, Elder Scrolls, so Skyrim mm-hmm. before that. Mm-hmm. Um, so th- this is theirs. Like, they need to land it. Um, or I actually do think this is pretty damaging to Xbox. Um, oh, oh, brand dude. as a whole and Bethesda as a whole if they do not land this. Uh, if Star, I mean, dude, if Starfield, okay, a couple of things. Starfield needs to come out and be an eleven out of ten. Yeah, it's not. I don't. It's think. not going to, but it really does for Xbox. But it it could be fine with like nine out of ten, ten out of ten. Yeah, it if, needs it needs to be game of the year material. It does. That's, yeah, that's that's exactly what I mean. If it comes out Redfall material, they're fucking done. Like that's yeah. really like spiraling out of control at that point. Like everyone's fucking fired. And we're like. St- done pursuing Activision Blizzard and we need to figure our fucking house out. Um, yeah. Because they have so much IP, so many studios, and but that cannot miss. That has to be yeah. in the game of the year conversation. Will it be? I mean, it's Bethesda. It's, you know, Fallout. I don't remember if Fallout 4 was in the game of the year conversation. Um, certainly 3 was. Um, Elder Scrolls, of course. I don't know, man. Yeah, it's not, it's not good. I don't Xbox is not in a great spot. Overall, no, no. console sale wise, toast. There's no way they're coming back from their deficit that they have against Sony. I don't even think they care. They, they want do, game, I mean, they want Game Pass, but they're kind of failing on that front he, as well. He said in the interview, like, we're not going to out console Sony and Nintendo. That's not our game. We can't. We're in third place. He said, he fucking said it. Like, yeah. we are in third place. We are not going to beat them. Like, you're certainly not with these kind of games, but yeah. Yeah. But again, Oof. historically, this is a point where Microsoft decides that they're done with games. Not because of Phil Spencer, but from his bosses are like, like yeah, we're just not going to invest in games now for a bit. We're just going to sell off our studios. Yeah, right. Um, 
and let the cycle repeat again. Mm-hmm. Um, God damn it. <laughs> the the idea of how hands off it seems that Microsoft has been with like this studio specifically. It do, I don't know how successful that strategy is going to be long term. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it, to me, it just feels like they just it's showing that there's a breakdown somewhere. It's somewhere yeah. in that layering system between Phil Spencer and the teams. One of those layers is not working. Yep. Um, and I, I, it could be for a myriad of reasons. We don't know. We don't yeah. know how it's breaking down. Is it people feeling like pressured that they have to get games out? Do they feel like they just have to say yes that we're going to get games out on these dates? Um, right. There's a, there's a lot of things. I'm just like, I don't know. It could be a lot of things, but it just points to mismanagement overall. Yes. And 100%. Um, not the dev. I mean, I get uh, Arcane Austin being like, hey, we want to try something new. That's great. Um, I, I have no no qualms about devs trying something new. That's how we get, like, Horizon. Yeah, um, right. I can't believe Gorilla, like, the company only known for making First uh, person shooters. <laughs> FPSs yeah, that mm-hmm. sit behind, don't stand up to Halo, yep. basically, but make Sony FPSs, sci-fi FPSs. Like, got the opportunity to say, hey, I actually want to make this third person action adventure game. Um, first person, uh, single player. Completely not in their wheelhouse. Yep. Um, but they pulled it off. And I think Sony, it shows that Sony gave them a lot of support to get there. Well, um, I mean, they got the fucking engine. No, no, no. I, they built that. They have the Decima engine. They had, they they had tech. They yeah, like, exactly. yeah. Like, Gorilla has tech. Yeah. They always had tech and they always like showed very well. It was just Horizon is the first time I feel like they showed narrative chops, like just really good design chops. Like that was like, holy crap, this is really good. Um, and they brought it together and it's like, and clearly Sony gave them a lot of support to do that. Um, and I feel like there's a potential where I look at Arcane Austin and I'm like, they probably had potential to make this work, but maybe that there's mismanagement and they're not getting the support to make it work. Um, right. Well, I mean, in the interview, Phil Spencer was talking about how, you know, it was already too far along to kind of get in from the beginning like they did with Starfield. But they have other teams that work on Unreal 5 and they're trying to get the support in there and, you know, give them the support they need. You know, yeah. maybe they didn't ask. Maybe they didn't. You know, I don't know, man. I don't know. It just points to something there. Um, yeah. When we're thinking of uh, actually, this is a neat tangent to something slightly different. Uh, I was seeing something um, with Sony and like Final Fantasy 16. I know how they're co-marketing. Yeah. They're mm-hmm. actually their stuff. They're co-developing 16. Oh, so they're they were them... a co-developer on 7 remake as well. Oh. Like their actual like devs are in the credits. Like oh. Sony devs are in the credits of 7 remake and it's they've stated that they're co-developing and co-marketing. Well, 16. I, yeah. So, I didn't realize they were co-developing. Yeah, they're giving them, like, dev support. And, like, probably they're, like, people, strike teams that they have for, like, okay, you're developing this for PlayStation 5. Let us ins- let's embed some Sony people with you and PlayStation people with you yep. so you make this thing kick ass on our hardware. We're going to talk to you about how our SSD works. <laughs> yeah, really. They're going to be like, here's here's the tricks. Let's see, let's see your engine. Let's yep. see if we can make it better yep. um, and make it run really well. Um but does that point to potentially Sony setting up an acquisition? Well, at least point to... wanting to? to. I, I can't imagine they don't want to. Like, of any target on the board, Square Enix is the biggest bullseye for fucking Sony. Yeah. Um, I, I can't see it not happening. I just <laughs> also feel like, is it also a move just to keep these games off of Xbox? Like, we could have helped yeah. with you. They're going nowhere. They stay with us. Yeah, they're on PC. And that, that's the thing. 7 Remake, never on Xbox. Yeah. Well, and it's such a low investment to keep the as an exclusive, basically. It's almost like a first-party title. It's not really. Yeah. But, like, you don't have to buy the studio to make – you don't have to get married to have sex. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. You know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So. Yeah, so – even from there, I'm like, well, clearly Sony is supporting even these third parties really well yeah. um, to keep qu- the quality bar really high on their on their games. And I'm like, how is it that they're doing this and Microsoft is failing even their first party devs? Well, and Microsoft, like not Xbox, but like Microsoft has more resources than fucking God. Like they could. It does. They have so know? much money. And actually, that's where the thing, like people were talking to like, man... Do they push Redfall out for shareholders? I'm like, I don't think shareholders give a damn about Redfall. 
like Microsoft stock uh, took a slight look in the past two weeks, took a slight dip for the CMA thing, and then just bounced right back. Oh, I thought they, I thought they bounced up uh, several percent after. The uh, CMA. I think that, uh, that's like, they're up now. Like yeah, Redfall yeah. isn't even a blip no, on their exactly. on their their stock price. <laughs> yeah, usually, I mean, I don't own a lot of Microsoft stock, but I own some. And sometimes you get, you know, think about it and get worried. Uh, this didn't even, I didn't even think about it in terms of stock because Microsoft is so much bigger than fucking Redfall. Microsoft um, is so much bigger than their games division. Than Xbox, yeah, exactly. Yeah, like, uh, it, which is crazy to say, but it's true. Like, they want to I mean, be there from a competition standpoint, but if they just got rid of their entire, the Xbox division, it wouldn't really matter. Like, no, it wouldn't. Not for not it wouldn't matter for Microsoft. It would matter for other things in the yeah. industry. But you know, I I feel like they could easily get rid of the console business. Sure, um, if they could transition to the streaming Netflix of gaming kind of thing, and just you don't need the box. You can put Xbox on anything or uh, Game Pass on anything. Um, but the problem is, no one's going to want like Sony or Microsoft aren't really going to want to put X or Game Pass on their consoles because then you'll maybe buy less of Sony games or less Nintendo games. Yeah, so fewer. Was Red, when say. did Redfall come out? Tuesday? Tuesday? Tuesday, I think. Yeah, there's not even a blip on there. Yeah, it was the second. Yeah, Tuesday. Yeah, they went down just a little bit, and then they've just been... Like, yeah. They're, investors They're up quite care. a bit right now. Yeah, the investors don't care. Yeah, as um, opposed to, like, um, uh, CD Projekt Red, when Cyberpunk fucking tanked, they're... they're well, yeah, price. because that's all like they the can... Shit. That's it's all they, they are. Do. Exactly. <laughs> they make games, they exactly. and they don't make that's that many. Right. Yep. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, what a Their games have to be, like... Perfect. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, investing in straight, effectively one game at a time studios probably not the best thing for your money. No. We'll say no. Like, definitely not. I know you have money in like Nintendo, but at least Nintendo puts out like a broad range of things. Yeah. Constantly, so they can have misses without it really having much of a a problem. Um, Nintendo is so interesting because they they have a pretty good cadence, even if it's not like the bangers that you want. But like yeah. you know, even the, the sports games fill them in. Pikmin's coming out, and yeah. even like the sports games that kind of miss don't really miss that badly. Yeah, um, they're just like there's, they're a, fine. there's a standard quality bar for an Nintendo. Game. Yeah, yeah, like, exactly. Um, they usually always going to be a fun game, may not be a great game, which, but yeah, they usually don't push out stinkers at all. No, last one was like Metroid Federation Forces or something. <laughs> yeah, and even that was like a super tiny little experimental yeah, exactly. thing, which I'd be like, okay, sure. Yeah. You just had a small team make something. Yep. Um, but yeah, that's uh but yes, I mean speaking of Nintendo, they have their big banger coming out here oh, in uh, my God, five dude. days. Fucking Friday. <laughs> <laughs> I I have been like mainlining fucking lore videos, story videos, Breath of the Wild, fucking like timeline videos for Zelda. Like, obviously, just, like, you know, in my free time grinding fucking Skyward Sword. Um, but, like, my daughter's so, like, Pokemon doesn't exist right now. It's just Zelda. Um, we watched this uh, F- Unreal 5 take of, like, a snippet of the story from... Uh, I watched that. Ocarina. I, I haven't played the game, but I was like, oh, this must be part of the story. Um, and she just loved it. I thought it was really good. Um, I kind of... Objectively... Amateur did a bunch of really good work in Unreal 5. Yeah. Subjectively, right. I hate it. <laughs> really? Why? I hate the art direction in it. Oh, you hate the art I style. Cannot I cannot stand... I, I hate how Link looks. I hate how the environments <laughs> look. It's way too busy. Uh-huh. Um, it really I see does. all the flaws in the art and, like, yeah. the 3D mod. Like, the water looks t- bad the to me. The water was like, really funny. It was just, like, this, like, a three or four frames. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't help it. I'm just, like, this is the game dev hitting where I'm just, like, cool. Good for you, hobbyist, but, uh... I appreciate all the hard work you did. This is not for me. Okay. Yeah. Um, I was, when we were, because I watched it by myself and I watched it with my daughter and I was like, she doesn't see these things and it's amazing for her. So this is good. Sure. <laughs> you know, this is, this is yeah. great. I, it was, you know. Uh, yeah. I really hated how Link looked. <laughs> like that. I saw it. I was like, whoa. Okay. That's, tr- <laughs> that's a choice. Um, His hair was very interesting. I thought. <laughs> the hair. I'm like, oh, okay. I mean, it's a very, I'm like, this is a, this is a choice and I'm, art direction you're deciding to take yes. the Ocarina of Time link. And I'm like, I can't, these two don't, I don't mesh them in my mind well. Yeah, um, right, it's right. not how I would choose to uh, up-res Ocarina link. Um, yeah. It's just fine. Uh, but yeah, I had, I was like, oh, oh, I can't. 
I can't. Mm-hmm. And, I, and now my YouTube is actually giving recommendations of other videos that they've made. <laughs> and I'm like, no, please no. Stop. It's like when you I play can't. Doki Doki Literature Club and you're a guinea hentai now. <laughs> oh, God. Still, <laughs> to this still. day. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I can't. I can't just go. Let, let's. Side note, let's go into my new and trending. Uh, God damn it. Brothel Simulator 2. Brothel Simulator, nice. Nice. That's a three, big old 3D one here. Okay, that's cool. Can I sidebar uh, off of that for a second? Yeah. Um, I, I know, I have known that there was like a hot tub Twitch thing. I didn't oh, really yeah. know what it for was. For a long time, yeah. yeah it's been yeah. going on for years. I didn't know what it was until the news of Amarath getting banned and then back. And I was like, who the fuck is this? And I went down a rabbit hole. I was like, oh, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Now I see what this thing is. It's people, especially, and Amarath is probably the biggest one, pushing what the Twitch uh, would allow yeah, from right. a uh, suggestive standpoint. Um, like, uh, what's too skimpy um, yeah, right. uh, to stream? And I mean, to a point, it's great because it actually makes Twitch slash Amazon make a strong stance about, be clear about like what their guidelines are. Yeah. Um, because they were pretty loose about it and like it's up for interpretation it's like no it's not really up for interpretation anymore they put out very clear (laughs) definitions after this yeah um so but yeah no that's that's the thing uh hot tub streams um i always thought there were people in hot tubs playing video games sometimes they are (laughs) but uh, not most of the time most of the time they're (laughs) just just chatting um it's like when you go to Twitch, it's like, what's the number one category on Twitch? A lot of times it's just chatting. Yeah. And what are a lot of those just chatting streams? Yeah, just chatting is right now at the top. Uh, oh, no, there's no hot tub. I'm trying to see. When's the first hot tub? Uh, Actually, not too far. Not too far. Uh, Amaranth's on there, but not a hot tub stream. So, you know, maybe maybe it's died off a little bit at this point. But oh, yeah. This after just chatting is 330k viewers and the yeah. top oh no no that's not true because world of warcraft has 52.5 valorant has 125k jesus christ okay yeah but 330k are just watching just chatting so yeah right and that's usually the top category unless there's some big uh esports event going on yeah but or it's like a big release but nope just chatting and it is just a wide range of stuff in here um so Welcome to Twitch. It's such a weird place. Um, yeah. Sorry to tangent. What else is in your top? Yeah, top no, no. I'm just laying one, two, uh, only, only two hentai games in my in my uh, list of new and trending now. So uh-huh. you know that's a that's at least something. Damn it! <laughs> it just won't stop. It's like you played a visual novel. Guess what else are visual novels? I'm yes, like, exactly. I understand, but I did. Doki Doki is not that. <laughs> You looked at, at Brothel Simulator, so let me tell you about <laughs> someone. Oh, the Witcher Three. No, <laughs> um, but back to Zelda coming out. Are you actually going to be able to play? Yes. Like, yeah. yeah. Amazon's going to drop it off. As Friday, it says it's going to be Friday. So probably the way that my thing works is like seven p.m. on Friday. Um, so I'll play that night in the weekend. I will. I will do my thing. Uh, I'm being very vague because some of you yeah. might be listening. Um, and that will, that, that will either be accepted or rejected. <laughs> so I may have it or I may not. Um, and which is fine because, um, I may or may not be done with Skyward Sword by that time. Um, and I do want to finish that before I start Tears of the Kingdom because I will never get back to it <laughs> if I start Tears sense. of the Kingdom. I'm not doing, I'm not doing it dirty like I did Horizon Zero Dawn. Dawn. I dropped it like a bad habit. Um, although I'm pretty close to the end of Skyward Sword. I'll talk about that later. Um, but I will be able to play it. I will probably be able to play it longer than I think. So I, I'm not too worried about it. Okay. Um, but if I'm like, play that, I'm definitely going to play it that weekend. So next podcast, we'll be talking about Tears We can of talk about it. Yes, only. Because I'll be, how will I, I will have put in several hours before we okay. talk um, next week. Um, and maybe more. But yeah. I'm excited. That's, I'm really oh my excited. God. I'm so excited. I, I'm so excited. <laughs> I just want to explore this world again. And see. Yep do random new random things um i'm wondering if it's going to start off in something like we don't expect before we even get to link in the you know the plateau or whatever the sky yeah well uh, my my here's my here's my assumptions uh the game is actually going to start with you on an island in the sky 
Yeah, that's most that, likely. And you won't be able to get off. Like, that's where you're going to, the tutorial's going to be. That's yeah. the new plateau, is right. actually just something in the sky. Yep. And you need to f- do some stuff up in the sky before you get the glider or whatever you need to get off out of the sky. I was just um, wondering if there was going to be some sort of prologue where you're probably, doing something unexpected. Or I, assume they're, I assume he's either doing something unexpected or they're going to have a cutscene that shows you why yeah. you're not, not like, why don't you have the Master Sword anymore? Right. Or, you know, all the things you had before. Exactly. That's all that's that's all I expect is something yep. and that does that might be playable, that might just be a quick like minute thing to be like, Yeah, here's catch you up. This happened. Next. Um yep, exactly. Breath of the Wild wasn't one for like uh lots of exposition and cutscene and story no, presented that. Like drain. everything that was in like, there was very quick. Even the yeah, the, exactly. the old the the stuff you're given through like the the memories and the, the pictures memories, yeah. was like mm-hmm. those are still really short cutscenes. Yep. Um, it's not a game that's like we're gonna sit here and heavy hand tell you what's going on. It's like nah, they're gonna they're gonna be quick. They're gonna get you in the gameplay super fast. Yep. Um, maybe that beginning part is playable to a point um, because they just want you playing. Yeah, but uh, my assumption is you're gonna get a something's gonna happen. You're gonna be up on an island in the sky and you're gonna do all your tutorial stuff again. That it will be probably similar that you'll collect your your powers up there again um i don't think they're gonna like re revamp that whole thing like here's they'll talk about why you have your stupid robot Um, yeah thing (laughs) um so the sheikah uh the like the um cryonis um was all tied to the sheikah slate it was if you don't have a sheikah slate then you don't have those powers but someone might have a sheikah slate that's possible. I feel like they built that whole, the, all those powers to like have them be completely absent in this game feels weird. I don't, I, yeah. think, I don't think they will be, but we haven't seen them with Link and he doesn't, no. I don't think he has a Sheikah slate from what we've seen so far. I would say here's the thing is that we just haven't seen much of the game. Yeah. Right. So, and they've been very, they're very coy about what they're showing. Yeah. So if you don't have the Sheikah slate to start, could you get a Sheikah slate? get your sneaker slate back later that has those other powers yeah. potentially like i i think that's true i and i keep coming back to that i keep thinking that's a lot to manage all maybe. the sheikah slate powers plus these new ones um, um could be i mean how did you sl- i can't remember how you selected them before like left bumper or something yeah like you just hold left yeah. bumper right and yeah. then you could select mm-hmm. the power you want to use yeah so it could be that unless they feel like giving you those options just makes the design space too large um and too hard hard to manage what you want to do at different places. So, yeah. and if not, then they're not going to give you a Sheikah slate back. You're, these are your new powers. Um, right. So in that scenario, which I think is maybe the most likely, I feel like throwing away the Sheikah powers. I'm just trying to get to a place where we're playing a Zelda. <laughs> like you're Zelda's not playing a Sheikah Zelda. Slate. You're, you're playing, not playing a Zelda. A Zelda. <laughs> God damn it. The trailers were pretty clear. I'm like, yeah, you're not playing a Zelda. You're out searching for Zelda again. What? Okay. Do you want to make a bet? <laughs> Sure. Very small one, because I think I'll lose this one. <laughs> oh, fuck, I dropped my mouse. <laughs> and my fucking trackball fell out of my mouse. <laughs> Are you still there? I am. You have a trackball? Oh, wait, use a trackball. I get one. I have one of those stationary um, mice. Okay. Oh, hope I don't need my mouse for anything. Um, a bet, yes. Um, how about a $10 game of our choice the other person has to buy for the other person? Okay. Deal. And we are playing the, you, as Zelda. And, and the bet that you get that we, well, okay, any moment as Zelda or actually like significant? Because I could no, not maybe see if there's a, that opening thing that you might maybe, but I don't think no, you're playing as Zelda throughout the rest of the game. I'm thinking what, I, what I'm thinking. No, no, no. I, I I agree. I'm thinking something like Mary Jane sequences in uh, Spider Man. Okay, so a significant game. Jump. Yeah, it's it's significant. It's actually like an actual like design chunk of exactly of game. yeah yep for some uh, reason you cut away from link and you are zelda and you're playing as her for some length of time okay i'll take that bet i don't all think right. we're getting it ten dollars <laughs> all right how, how about this one are you playing as ganondorf <laughs> no i heard someone with that theory today i was like uh that one seems i mean they did get matt mercer though i could play as matt mercer that's cool that's the only thing that makes me think, like, maybe they, like, really went out of their way to get voice actors for Ganondorf, or a voice, voice actor for Ganondorf, who's, like, a really well-known voice actor. Maybe? 
Um, but they went out of their way to get a voice actor for Zelda and redo. So. Yeah. Um, we'll play as her in the Hyrule Warriors spinoff. <laughs> there you go. Um, that that's the thing. That's what you that's what you get. Um, yes, exactly. Which is you know it's fine. It's fine. But anyway, we'll see. There's lots of theories, and we'll see. Seems unlikely because Nintendo is Nintendo. Yeah. Um, and it feels like they're like, no, this is what a Zelda game is. You don't actually play a Zelda. You yes. play as Link. Um, the Legend of Link. Uh, I'm trying to think. Is there any... God, I'm trying to think. Um, where's the cut... In other games, do you cut away at all? Did Wind Waker have you play as anyone else? Tetra? No. You played they didn't. No. Ha- they didn't play... You didn't play as Tetra ever, did you? No. You yeah. would cut away... You to would... her, right? No, not to her, but to Medley or Makar, you would yeah. use your command melody, and then you would play as them. So you would literally play as them. Um, so that was that felt like the only time when you play as someone else in the Zelda yeah, series. Yeah, and it was like a weird mechanic to do. It was a mechanic. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Uh, trying to think if there's ever been another time when you've played not Link. Um, in, a in, the main, in the mainline series, game yeah. ser- series. Wolf Link. <laughs> nope, <care>. sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, you could say that you're playing as Midna then, but no, you're, yeah, you're Wolf Link. Yeah. Um, you're playing as Link, yeah. Yeah, uh, we'll see how this bet goes, but I doubt it. I just don't think. No. I'm pretty sure it's on a whiteboard somewhere of like Legend of Zelda, things that must exist. You play as Link. You do not play as Zelda. <laughs> they just like <laughs> underline it. Like this yep. is this is the truth. <laughs> uh, I don't I don't make the rules, just gotta follow them. Yeah. That's funny. I uh, I sent Anthony a photo from uh, I was downtown San Diego and there was a beer called Eight Bit Ghost of Brushima, um, that was quite tasty. Is it Eight Bit uh, Brewery? I guess I don't know. It just said Eight. I, I assumed Eight Bit was Brewery. Brewery in Temecula. Is it in Temecula? Marietta, Temecula. Yeah. Shit. Okay. Yeah. Eight Bit Eight Bit Brewing Company. I'm looking on their website right now. I'm like. Uh, well, they got me with their name, and it was good beer. And then it was a hazy IPA. And the next day, it was gone. <laughs> it wasn't there. Looking here, um, there's sour. Oh, that's nice. Sour IPA and tarts. Mario tart. <laughs> oh my god. I have some two. Merch. Mario tart rapid wrangler and Mario tart badlands. Um, oh my god, I need a shirt from this fucking place. <laughs> if you are um, current beer list, yes. Ghost of Brushima. There yep, it is. That was it. God of poor. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's so good. Dark Forces. One Up Blonde. The VVIP. Animalt Crossing. <laughs> oh my gosh, Animalt Crossing. Look at the, um, under the light and refreshing, a the Red Above 8 bit Michelada. The Vit, but with Vit. the VV from like yeah. the VVVV game. <laughs> that's like a deep cut. That's pretty good. My neighbor Tartaro for another one of those fucking hours. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. Uh, I don't actually think that that's about the VVV game. You don't think so? No, I think it's the witch, the witch. Oh, that makes the movie that has the sense. double V, you're right, you're right, you're um, right. and it has like the the goat head and the woman the floor. Yeah, that's totally that's uh, yeah, that's a witch right. thing. Yeah, um, Animal Crossing though, that's pretty good. Yeah, one up blonde, cool uh-huh. with that. Um, this place is cool. Okay, if next time in San Diego, yes, let's go to Temecula and get drunk. Sounds that, very that's good on nerdy beer. <laughs> yeah, looks like they got. A- Looks like they got a um arcade. I'm gonna check out the clothing. What kind of clothing do you have? Well, this you're rolling a joint on this shirt. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? Okay, interesting. Some simple eight stuff. Bit. Eight bit. Yep. Just a little yep. like beer logo. It's like <laughs> a Gears fun. of War kind of one, or it's a fucking yeah. GI Joe kind of one. This is riveting podcast content. I'm sure. For I know. But there you go. Uh, <laughs> reach out, Eight Bit Brewing, if uh you want to sponsor our podcast. Yes, exactly. Uh, <laughs> We will we, we will be there for you, um, but yeah. So, real excited for Zelda on Friday. I will be waiting for my physical copy. Amazon still says it will be delivered to me on that Friday. Yeah, me too. Um, from Amazon, uh, I should check Best Buy. I have the Amiibo coming through there. Oh yeah, me too. That's right. So I got that through Best Buy, and I have the controller through Best Buy, the Pro controller. That but the pro controller I can have out. shipped. I have to actually pick it up in store. Oh, really? Interesting. Yeah. So I'll have to figure out how to make that happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that you even, even though you can still get OLEDs, you can't get that controller. No. That's Part so of me is like, should I sell the controller? Mm-hmm. 
I'm fine. Can I finance an OLED with this control, this pro <laughs> controller? Boy, if you could, that would be a good. That'd be a good deal. Uh, um, let's, let, let's see. Kingdom. I mean, people are buying it for on eBay now is for one fifteen, one twenty for that controller. Oh, that's not. That's not as high of a market as I thought it would be. Well, that's let's see what they that's stuff up for now. It's sold. Uh, it's selling one twenty five, one thirty. Yeah. Huh. I like it though. I like that controller a lot. Um, it looks good. I yeah. I, thought, I honestly didn't think that the OLED looked that good. I mean, the screen does, but like the, the the stuff around it. And then in person, I'm like, nah, it's actually pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. So I don't see I've, the OLED on here on Best Buy actually. The hell. Yeah, I only see it on Amazon. Oh, okay. Um, and it's still checking. Yeah, I could. You could. I could buy it right now. It could be to my house on Thursday. Still um, for not, sale. I'm not going to do it. Um, yeah. But it does make me wonder if like Target has it. Um, mm-hmm. Like Let's it see. does feel like these they made. Yeah, I mean, I could totally just walk into Target over in the closest one for me in Seattle, um, and they have them. Mm, I could just walk into the store and get it. Yep. That's crazy. So they made a lot of them. So. Yeah, I guess so. Well, this is my Amiibo are coming. They'll ship it by Friday. So we'll see. Uh, Best it. Buy has been really good for me on that because I was okay. worried about that for like, because uh, I had Octopath Travel oh, yeah. 2 through mm-hmm. them and mm-hmm. um, Prime Remastered through them. Right. And they both showed up on release day. Um, They just give themselves the leeway just in case. But, yeah, right. Um, I got two. I got the um, the... Tears of the Kingdom amiibo, and then I have uh, Majora's Mask amiibo. They did a reprint. Nice. Yeah. yeah, still want the Wind Waker ones, but so good. Those ones are great. Um, yeah. This is telling me that I bought my new processor January 2021. I did not would not have guessed my shit is like two and a half years old now. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, time. Yeah, is time really has no circle. meaning right now. Yes, yeah. exactly. Um. All right. So, how about we talk about video games again? What have you been playing? Yeah. Uh, Honkai Star Rail. Yeah, I okay. played a shit ton of that game. Nice. Uh, I have exhausted the content available. You have exhausted the content available. Yep. I mean, Do I can. Gro- I can. Gro- I can. Gro- <laughs> I guess not. Um. <laughs> I do, but uh, yeah, I beat all the story that's nice. there so far. I got the okay. thing of being like. Come back later. More will be added. Like we have to, we have to check this out. Give us time. I'm like, okay, <laughs> like I'm done there. I guess I still have some side quests that pop up daily sometimes. Oh, but, mm-hmm. but that's about it. And then it's just the grind as I wait. Um, I've only given them five dollars for their their like um mm-hmm. monthly thing. That's right. it. That's it. Like got the bucks out of me, and I have the like premium character that they released at the launch. Mm-hmm. I've I basically have just a badass team. I'm like, cool. I'm I'm good. I will just check in with this daily and do do a little bit. But uh I guess I'm waiting for more content at this point. That's cool. I'm it's a neat I... game though. For free to play like turn based RPG. Real good. How much like do you it? think you played of it? Hour wise. Uh, it's hard to say because uh I realized that the launcher stays up. I play it through Epic. Oh, and the okay. launcher stays up sometimes, mm-hmm. and that keeps me in the game. Yeah, right. Uh, so I'm pretty sure my hours are, like, way off. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. Honkai. Honkai Star Rail. What are we... uh, it's probably about 15 hours total. Oh, that's not bad. 14, 15 hours. Because okay. it says I'm at 19, and I bet at least four, four to five of that was literally just the <laughs> launcher being yeah. open on my on my screen. Well, um, I take back my sleep comment then, because that's not really that bad. No, it wasn't a huge amount. Um, so it's—I mean, I'm just at the grind stage of like just trying to characters at this point with items and levels and the whole thing. But uh, well, I'm looking forward yeah. to playing more of it. It's like more story comes out. It's kind of—it's getting intriguing. It's, I would say, a little weird from the start, but I'm kind of starting to understand the lore world and the universe that they're setting. And basically, you're going to kill gods because that's what you do. Oh, of course, you of course are. You do. Yeah, <laughs> of course um, you are. But the gods are kind of dicks, so got to kill them. To um, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, you'll be surprised to learn, perhaps, that I also played that in the last <laughs> week. I played on my phone. Oh. Um, and I was like, oh, I do need a backbone for this fucking thing. Um, played my phone, played for an hour, 
uh, just to get a feel for it because you had played it and I just wanted to be able to talk about it. And it just gets good immediately. Like the story is really interesting immediately and the mechanics are fun. And I don't know, I was surprised. Sometimes like those, I don't know, uh, especially space RPGs, like yeah. I feel like are slow and kind of like build up the world and the lore where really this just kind of got you right into the action. They drop and, you right in. And yeah. you're like, I guess that I don't know everything going on, but I'm here now. Um, yep. And the tutorial sets you up pretty well of being like, oh, uh, did you get through the, the main tutorial part? I don't think I finished it. Because um, at the beginning, you play as Kafka. Yeah, I got past Kafka. Oh, okay, tutor- so you play, you played Kafka and you got to the point where you got to make your character. Like, yes. You became, uh-huh. you got to choose yep. uh, gender or look and then. Exactly. Okay, so and yeah, played, you, you got through the little, intriguing played. part of the story of being like, well, who the hell is Kafka? What the yes, hell's going on? Exactly. Um, yeah. I probably played for like another 15 minutes after that. Okay. Um, so, yeah. And then my yeah. daughter came upstairs and said, time to come downstairs. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's a generally interesting game, and the story progresses, and there's definitely, I'm like, okay, I get it. I know that this, is, like, it's tied in with a other game that they've done before Genshin. It was um, Honkai impact third was like one of their earlier mobile games Mm -hmm. and so it's the same universe i just don't have a clue how it connects to that or if at all really but i just know that honkai impact was very very mobile game and i would say genshin and star rail for people who haven't played them like sometimes people talk about them being like they're mobile games i'm like they kind of blend blur what a mobile game is yeah like I only play them on PC, and they definitely feel like PC games. I played Genshin on PlayStation, and it felt like a console game. It's yeah. not. It's hard to just pin them as like, oh, this is just a just your your mobile gotcha game. I'm like, it's a gotcha game, but they kind of have pushed past the boundaries. Um, and you can play them wherever because your account transfers to every device you play it on. So. Oh, that's interesting. Because yeah. I, I mean, I, I'm playing on my phone, and it feels perfectly serviceable, even without the um... yeah. Like it's just the the virtual stick or whatever. Yeah. Um. I think if I played, you know, as much as you did, I would need to switch over to a controller. Um. But yeah, I, I thought it was interesting. Yeah. I'm not gonna stick with it very much because sure. shit's coming out. <laughs> yeah. But um, I just wanted to check it out and yeah. Yeah. It seems cool. Uh, I played that. Uh, I played through like an hour, hour and a half of Final Fantasy VI Pixel Remaster. Um, I saw so you on the, Switch playing the that, beginning, yeah. beginning of that, getting through mm-hmm. that. Um. It looks really good, I will say that, for a pixel remaster. And the music is phenomenal. I already knew the game had great music. That's yeah. a given. But the new arrangements that they did for the pixel remasters, mm, so good. I just kind of sat there for like 10 minutes listening to the world music. At one it point. is really good, yeah. Um, yeah, big fan of that game um, and the pixel remasters. And the fact now that those are out, you can play Final Fantasies 1 through 12 on the Switch. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. <laughs> Um, waiting for 13, if that ever happens. Although I don't know if the Switch could actually play 13. Um, right, you're like pushing up the edge of their... You really are, and it's a PS... Th- I mean, I guess the three si- it was on the 360 as well. Yeah. But it's really a PS3 game, and man, the PS3 architecture was so weird and different. Yeah. <laughs> that I have a hard time saying, like, ooh, it might be rough trying to get that actually to run on the Switch well. Um, and it's not really but... everyone's favorite. <laughs> no. Um... So I wonder if they'd even bother. Yeah, exactly. Um, but you but like, can you can play a weird version of 15 on the Switch. Oh yeah, that chibi one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, but I mean that's so much so much quality content for just it's, Final it, Fantasy. You know, it's a lot. I'm just like, wow. Um, and I didn't well, play it, but it was on Super Sale, so I just picked it up. Was the uh, Star Ocean, um, first departure R? What the fuck is that? It's the first, it's a remake, it was a th- PSP remake version of Star Ocean, first, but it's, which is a space JRPG, mm-hmm. um, but it was on like 80% sale on, oh, shit. Okay. on Switch, and I was like, I've never played a Star Ocean game, it's the first one, I've heard it's pretty short, mm-hmm. kind of mediocre, it's very simple, like, like a lot of the early Final Fantasies are very simple, like, yeah. um, so I've been interested, and in, just like, I think it was like six bucks, seven bucks, mm-hmm. I was like, sure. Why not? Let's just make the Switch the full uh, RPG of the the '90s and early 2000s machine. Um, it's a fucking great RPG machine, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's real good. Oh my god, it's so good. Um, so and, you know, 
a bunch of Tales games on there. Fucking oh, that's uh, true. Trails games too. Um, I haven't played any of those. God, I probably put like ten hours into a Tales of the Abyss. Maybe it was before the pandemic, and I was like, "Oh, that's really cool." Um, but then I fucking I think Hollow Knight grabbed me, and I was off to the races on that. Yeah, but yeah, it's like I don't know why I picked it up. Just like, sure, why not? It's cheap. Um, what a weird name. First departure R. Yeah, why not? Um, there's a lot coming out on this little system that I'm just like, man. Um, give me all of it. You got Zelda. God, it's gonna be a lot. There's gonna be a lot of games starting on on uh, <laughs> Friday. I'm gonna have that. I'm like, do I even get Diablo? I probably not even get Diablo because I'm like, damn it, I'm gonna be playing this and then I'm gonna play Final Fantasy 16. That's kind of where I'm not at 16. Too. Oh yeah, sixteen. Yeah, sixteen. Yeah, it's kind of where I'm at too. Where uh, Breath of the oh, God damn it, Tears of the Kingdom is going to take me. I mean, w- you know, through the summer probably. But um, and I've all I pre-ordered um Street Fighter Six, which comes out right before Diablo. Like I I'll play Diablo later, I think. Um, because I will probably? probably jump into Final Fantasy sixteen. Yeah, I think I'm definitely going to jump. Like, of course, sixteen is probably my most hyped game. Honestly, even more than Zelda. Like, I love Zelda, but. I'm I'm itching for, yeah, for sixteen. Oh, that was a thing I saw on that. We can quick aside to that. It is that the I, some YouTube person who has a bunch of Final Fantasy content interviewed the voice actor Clive, hour and a half long, just talking to the voice oh. actor of Clive. Um, some key nuggets out of there was like, because asked him like, all these trailers coming out. Are you worried about like what if people have seen and everything? He's like none of the trailers have spoiled anything. You haven't seen what this game's about. How is and what's that in there. fucking possible? We've They're seen like, so much of it. And I'm like, and then I was like, I'm like, you're right. When like, so creative business unit three, when they do the final fantasy 14 trailers and everything, you know, nothing of what the actual story is going to be. Mm. Like you think you can think you're like, Oh, look at how much they're showing in the trailer. And then you play, especially like playing in Walker. I was like, Oh no, they didn't spoil anything. Interesting. <laughs> like, there were twists beyond belief in that. And it's like, so I'm like, you're right. We probably actually haven't seen much of anything about really what 16 is and what it's about. Although it did get banned in Saudi Arabia. So, yeah, you know. so we do know some stuff. <laughs> so yeah, that there's probably some, some, uh, gay relationships in there somewhere. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. So, but that was interesting. Just listening to the, that voice actor. He has worked on it for three and a half years before he could say, tell anyone what he Oh my god, that's a long time. Like, are yeah. you a spy? Are you in the CIA? <laughs> oh man. All he could say was he was the he was a voice cast in a uh as a voice in a video game. That's it. Couldn't say who what company it was for, anything. Jim. So yeah. Um he was just happy that he could actually talk to someone now about it. <laughs> like uh Ben Starr is his name. Is he with British? uh yeah, two yeah. two R's in his last name. Oh, okay. Um he hasn't done a lot of voice acting like video game work before. Like has he done other voice acting for like anime and stuff or I looked and it didn't seem like it. Um, no, like he's done some theater, done some film. Interesting. Like, and he talks about, he just auditioned like his agent said, Hey, you should audition for this thing. It's a video game voice part. He's like, okay. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, fine. But he in. said in the, in the thing, like, he didn't know what it was for. They didn't tell him. And then he got lines, and the lines had, which said is pretty common for any kind of voice reading on stuff that they don't want to know about, is they replace words, so you don't know what it's about. Oh, interesting. So he didn't know anything about it. He just read lines. And, like, and then said four days later, he, he actually got cast. They're like, we would like you, would like you for the, the lead in this game. Don't know who the lead is yet. Doesn't know anything about the game. And a week later, I assume after an NDA and everything, they're like, yep. here's your line. Here's your actual lines. Um, and he, and they, the words that had been replaced were like Chocobo, Crystal, Sid. Like, and he's like, oh shit. He's like, I just landed Final Fantasy. <laughs> he's like, I just landed the lead in Final oh Fantasy. Oh my God, that's great. He's like, I'm freaking out because it sounds like he's a big fan. Um, Wow, that's super cool. So he plays video games even though he hasn't. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, and he play, sounds like he's played a lot of Final Fantasy. 
Like, okay. this is one of his favorite franchises. And he's just like, oh, shit. <laughs> he just loses his mind when he finds yeah, out. Yeah, but then also fucking... freak out of being like, oh, my God. Wow. I'm under so much pressure of myself to not oh, yeah. fuck, fuck this up. <laughs> I feel like that must be what um, Matt Mercer is going through. Like, With Ganon? When, you know, oh, whatever. Yeah, shit. play fucking Ganondorf. You're just like, wow, I'm sure people are already hating on him for, like, even just Ganondorf being voice acted, like it falls onto him for like the direction he's taking from Nintendo when it's not even yeah. his direction, you know? Yeah. So that was my side to 16, which I'm excited for. But uh, thinking of anything else I've been playing. No, it's really just been that. What have you been up to? I mean, Skyward Sword. Um, yeah, Skyward sure. Sword. So <laughs> let me, I was going to pull up the fucking walkthrough. So the way that Skyward Sword um, is structured there's basically like the forest area, the desert area, yep. and the volcano area. Yep. So you kind of go through those three areas in the first like I'm almost thinking of like an like a fucking swirl to this game where I'm swirling slowly and more quickly into the center where I hit those three areas and then I get new abilities that help me traverse parts of those areas that I couldn't traverse before. Okay. So when I come back to each of those areas I come back for a thing, but when I come back for a thing, it's actually three things. I it see. Is, it is the silent realm where you have to go around and find tears uh, and avoid guardians. And when you get a tier, you guardians freeze for 50, or 90 seconds. But if you get spotted or something else happens or time runs out, then they start being active again. You get hit once, you start over. So it's that sequence. And then there is a sequence where it's like a dungeon-esque puzzle in that area to get to the dungeon and then you play the dungeon. So the first sequence of three is just play that area. This, and they're all dungeons. The second area is you're going to get to a dungeon for the third part of this three part thing. And there's three of those to do. So then I've got through all that. I'm like, you know, 38 hours. And then I'm like, okay, I'm getting to the end. No. And then I've got to face one of the big bosses two more times. I've already played some face them once. And go and find fragments of a song from four different places, which are each dungeon-esque puzzles, to put that song together to then be able to face the final boss. So I'm like, I think I'm close to the end. Those the the four pieces we have to f- like face the final boss tw- or the pent ultimate boss twice, find the four fragments of the song, and then face the final boss. Like that's what I have left, and it could be five hours. It could be longer, um, <laughs> but I'm at the point now where I'm actually liking Skyward Sword a lot more than I did. I'm trying not to hate it because I'm trying to grind it out before Tears of the Kingdom because it's not its fault that I'm trying to finish it in a certain amount of time, but I think it is too long. I think they shoved a ton of ideas into the game, some sure. of it for motion control, some of it just to try shit, but I feel like this game had to happen for Breath of the Wild to happen. There's so sure. much in it. It's like, this is Breath of the Wild. This is them figuring out, how do these things work? And then realizing the linear structure of some of these Zelda games doesn't help with these things. So let's just break it open. It's not linear anymore. Here's Breath yeah. of the Wild. Well, no, they did a link to the, uh, a link between worlds. That's true. That's true. And they, that's where they exper- did their like first experiment, post Skyward Sword experiments. Absolutely. Into, like, being yeah. like, wait, we kind of think we've hit a wall. Yes. We need to, we need to try something different. Yep, 100%. Um, and people liked a link between worlds, <laughs> and it was so I think good. developers liked a link between making it, and they're like, yep. okay, good to know. Let's make this grander now. Um, so yeah, um, so that's been my experience. I still can't go back to it. God, I just I, qu- I cannot bring myself to go back to that game. Like it was I, so soured by it. I you know I'm not playing with motion controls, and it brings its own problems. But it's it's certainly becoming another Wind Waker where I'm playing most of it with my daughter. Sure. And she's enamored by the story. There's a lot of good story. Um, really, it's really nice story to set up like all of the Zelda that comes after because this is the first timeline story. Um, faced Girahim, which my daughter is obsessed with. Um, and it was a really interesting, really engaging battle that I beat on the first try. I had like one heart left and I was just like, it was fucking rush. And we were like, my wife was even there. We're just all watching it and just like, it was amazing. It was really fun. Um, So it's been a good time. I'm looking forward to finishing it. 
I might replay it again one day because that's how my daughter and I do this, but I doubt it. <laughs> um, maybe we'll just watch a shortened replay. Would you rather replay this or Wind Waker? Oh, Wind Waker. I, yeah. Yeah, Wind Waker. Wind I think Waker, that's the thing. It's just yeah. like there are other Zelda games that you're like, I oh, know if I was going to replay a Zelda game, I would play that one. Or that what, one. what I would rather do at this point is play more Zelda games. Like, there's tons yeah. of Zelda games I have not played. It. And you go back to Link to the Past and beat it. I've only gotten to the Dark oh. World and I put it down. I did not beat it. I got to oh. Dark World and I was like, what the fuck is happening? Uh, uh, the part that blew my, like, preteen mind yeah. is what happening when you hit the Dark World for the first time. And you're like, oh, this game is huge. Yes. Compared to what I thought it was. At that time, when I'm looking at it, it's huge. In today's thing, when I'm looking at it, I'm like, oh, it's quaint. Yeah. Like, it's bigger, but uh, got to imagine the last Zelda that had, I had played before that. I didn't play Zelda 2. I knew Zelda 2. Did not like Zelda 2. Uh, the original Zelda played that multiple times on an NES. Got a Super Nintendo and a Link to the Past. And a Link to the Past just blew my mind whenever you're like, oh, we're not done. Oh no, this is huge. We got a whole. Oh no, <laughs> that's where I got stuck because I was like, you know, I got to the end. I thought, and I was like, oh good, I'm done. It was a great game. What? No shit, I'm not even halfway through. No. Fuck. Um. And they so do a I... lot of cool mechanics of like shifting back and forth between the light and the dark world. Yeah. And like mm-hmm. fizzing out puzzles, doing stuff in the dark world to affect the light world, and all sorts of cool stuff. Right. Yeah, I feel like that's where I was getting lost. Is like, am I in the right place to do the thing I need to do? Yada yada. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, but I do want to get back to that. I I'm probably a third of the way through Ocarina of Time and a third of the way through Majora's Mask. You know, okay. just, I need to go back. Like going back to Skyward Sword has been great because I'm feeling like I want to go back to more of the games that I got a third of the way through or halfway yeah. through. Um, and just commit to it. So, so much for short games, by the way. Uh, <laughs> After yeah. Crimson Shroud, like this is it. But, um, so I played that, and then I, I fucking loaded something. Oh God, I played Neon White. Oh yeah, uh, I saw you posted about that. Fuck, dude, that game is incredible. Okay, uh, it's really. I picked it up because, fuck you, PlayStation, by the way. Their PlayStation Stars thing was like, you can get a digital collectible, which is not an NFT, but it's a digital thing on your fucking app, sure. of Shuhei Yoshida bobblehead. I was like, I got, fuck it, I really want that. So you had to play one of five indie games he likes, and it, one of them was Neon White. And I was like, well, I wanted to play it for a while anyways. I'll just get it. And it's really clever, and the levels could take you you know, a minute. Um, yeah. And then there's like 10 levels or whatever in a world, and then there's 10 worlds, I think. Um, and just the music is fucking killer. I'm so good. And it's just like adrenaline. Like you just one more time, one more time. Then I started without even really thinking about it, wanting to beat my times and like keep getting better and better at the levels. Um, I was just like, holy shit. Two hours later, I was like, I just played that for two hours. Like I meant to turn it on for five minutes to get the trophy and then come back to it later. Cause I wanted to play Skyward Sword and I just kept playing. Nice. Um, so good I don't know. Good hmm? sign. It's a yes. Good sign. Great sign. I don't know if you've seen it, watched it. Um, I've watched some of it. I've watched streaming. It looks really cool. Yeah. Um, I should play it at some point, I guess. Like, I've heard just good things, just constantly good things about it. So, yeah, I feel like at some at some point you should check it out. I wish it came out last year. If I had, if I had played it last year, if, if the rest of it holds up like it does the beginning, like it would have been on my top five. Um, it's really just starts off at least that good we'll see yeah, how it finishes ben esposito yes yeah it's fucking donut county <laughs> dude that's crazy it's it's mind-blowing that this not at all like donut county is just like i don't know katamari Damacy yeah. kind of just like chill <laughs> and this game is not not that and it, the thing that's really good about it is it rewards failure where like you're you kind of have to be really precise to like get the best run that you can get but if you fuck it up then you're like i'm just gonna explore the this puzzle box and see like where the shortcuts could be because there are some really great shortcuts where like you f- the way that it's the, the way that it's designed is like very naturally has language that flows along a certain path which is a fucking trick that's not really what you should be doing you should be um shortcutting your way across the um the little world interesting it's it's really amazing from the fir- yeah. the first level is really amazing. And then on top of that, it's a fucking visual novel. <laughs> like, okay. 
there's a bunch of cool visual stuff going on. Um, uh, story stuff going on, I mean. Okay. Uh, this is a quote from Ben Esposito on, on it. I wanted to do something that was just stupid and over the top and really self-indulgent. That sounds about right. <laughs> it's like, that's you just wanted to do something crazy. Um, yeah. I guess it works out. Um, it really does, man. It's so good. All right. So, okay. It's almost... I don't know if it's like this is not a good comparison at all because it's not the same kind of game. You're not going to have the same kind of experience. But you know how with Hades, you like died and you wanted to go again? Yeah. Uh, it's It just feels Still, like that. It has that kind yeah. of draw to it. Mm -hmm. um, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, it look, always looked really neat. So that's what I've been playing. All right. Yeah. Good week. Real good I week. I guess, guess you can just uh, power through Skyward Sword um, by Friday. Yeah, I think the last bits you know in terms of the walkthrough it's got like seven more things to do um and then like i wasted some time because the walkthrough was like you really need to upgrade this and that and this before you face the next area and i tried to get some materials and it just rng wasn't happening i was like fuck this i just <laughs> went and i was like this was a fucking cakewalk i did yeah not you're like no i didn't shit <laughs> <laughs> no i did not need to upgrade a fucking thing um so i'm just i'm apparently godlike <laughs> there you go oh uh, Next week, Tears of the Kingdom, we're going to be talking yep. about it. So Let's do it. Don't, don't come if you're afraid of spoilers, because yeah. the next few weeks, man, are going to be all about it. Yeah. All right, man. Well, thanks uh, for coming on, Anthony. This is episode 384 of Prof and Death Play Games. If you like our podcast, please rate us on your podcast service of choice. Uh, and we will be back next week with our hot tub Tears of the Kingdom podcast. I'll make sure that you can hear the water splashing around yeah. for that great podcasting uh, <laughs> recreation. Pushing the limits of Libsyn. Yeah. <laughs> I'll hopefully will not electrocute myself in the hot tub. Okay, exactly. Do I put the PS5 or do, do I put the Switch in? It's battery powered. I should be okay, right? <laughs> oh, cool. Uh, later, everyone. See ya. <laughs>